Okie doke, I don't think I need to touch the board so I'll try to walk softly and yeah I still haven't purchased a proper tripod so it's any movement and uh, maybe it'd be a good seismometer. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I decided to go with some larger blocks I know and due to the fact I had to go with larger blocks I had to add a bit of color off to the sides because I couldn't see enough so I'm going that way. This is like I said functional land from hell. Uh, a few other wrinkles. So this would be my. This is going to be my fifth playthrough. Um, the Russians are on the top, so they're the uh, red, the yellow, and the orange. And then I've got just. I'm just going to say Germans, or for now, let's go with Austro-Germans. Why not? So the green will be Germans, and then we're going to go with the um, um, the Austro-Hungarians there. Why not? So. Everybody's got the same amount of strength points, kind of. Uh, you'll see at least active on the fronts. And I've given uh, each side the same number of supply points, uh, 80, 40 for these guys. However, I'm trying to change, uh, uh, adding a wrinkle to my game for now, which is um, giving the Russians command and control issues. So that with my, in my, uh, uh, rule system right now is every time you do a coordinate or a combined attack with uh, people that are not in your um, command structure like specifically you're gonna suffer a die roll uh, negative minus one per whatever so if there was a possibility let's say that all three Russian armies could combine an attack it would be a minus two die roll modifier to all of them um, so that's the way I'm doing that. But the problem with that was, uh, or a, uh, an, an additional wrinkle, was the fact that that means each um, army HQ, I've used the little C's, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see them. So you've got the red guy here, yellow guy here, trying to keep them away just in case of a retreat, but still being able to attack with the movement uh, cost value of four with the terrain still being in effect just like the Valkyrie with which, which would be um, two movement points to go across the woods uh, broken doesn't uh, do anything but it will affect the um, uh, your die roll modifier if your uh, the defender can um, defend across that it's as simple as that so and then we've got the green guys here everybody's 12 across the board and now you're going to see the reserves we've got reserves everybody uh, the Austro-Hungarians have a reserve of 12, so do the Germans. However, because I wanted to try to also, you know, give, you know, kind of give it a bit of a 50-50, I've given the, um, and everybody's capped at 12. You can't bring anybody above 12. Like that, this is the infrastructure. Maybe I'll go into something later where the Germans are a bit better, but right now I'm going with that. But I'm giving the Russians at least, which is kind of historical, they had a lot more people, um, wastage as they called it my god um so i'm going to give them 16 each um the other things right now is because of advance after combat and so on and so forth or and uh reduction in in troops um i'm allowing no recombination or whatever but the uh headquarters like i can't just swap troops from here to here kind of thing but i obviously for the advance after combat some are going to leave but I'm not going to get into this whatever. The reinforcements have to come from the headquarters. <sighs> i got to look at the other side of the map so I can try to remember uh, certain aspects. Um, what else can I tell you? Yeah, it's still going to be um, uh, uh, one supply point, uh, you know, can supply uh, four strength points in an attack. Um, one supply point can uh, supply two uh, um, strength points in a counterattack. Oh yes, the I think I figured out uh, a nice way of doing the... Um, what's going on here, Chris, with your uh, trying to do... Um, every attacker has a separate, like it's, you know, they're specific for the terrain. Yep, I'm rolling. This is the problem. It, it may be limited to a small amount of counters and whatnot. Uh, due to the fact that every attacker rolls separately. We apply the die roll modifiers 
and add up the hits. The defender is going to roll once. Then is going to look independently at each um, uh, uh, attacker and see their die roll modifiers. And if there is an extra hit or whatever uh, due to those die roll modifiers, that extra hit will have to go to that unit. The rest can be partitioned out uh, whatever the way they want. Um, I've also, the only other um, thing is, so here's the turn sequence, if you want to call it that, uh, would be uh, movement, including reinforcements. Uh, but remember, if the headquarters move, they cannot supply. That's just the way it is. There's going to be no extra reinforcements. These are your reserves. I guess I should, I should call them reserves. Remember, I'm, I know the Russians is like, hey, wait a minute. You've got 16. Didn't you say they're capped out at 12? Yeah, but these, these guys can't fight. They're reserves. They have to be pushed in. I can make a brand new orange cube if I want and, and pop some, you know, whatever in. That's okay. Um, Oh yeah, the last uh, the last playthrough was wicked fun. I, I immediately realized with the Russians, it was like eh, I probably don't need need to use this spot, and I suckered the Germans in big time. I moved. Uh, so anyways, I started moving some. Like I said, well, I'm just going to use some of my frontline troops as an extra reserve. I started shifting some people on over here. Oh my God, the Russians and Austro-Hungarians are just hammering the living dickens out of each other. It was nuts, but the, um, there was only two armies for the last round for the Russians. Um, it was brutal. Uh, yeah, that army was starting to suffer. So I had to actually go, okay, fine, we're gonna concentrate and push over here. And thank God I started to bring the Russian uh, reinforcement over so I could uh, plug up that uh, vacancy. There's some fun stuff going on here is what I'm trying to say for me. Anyways, maybe you guys would be like, what the hell? Um, so let's get back to this universe. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, anyways, I suckered the German. Well, I'm not because I'm talking about the last game. Suckered the Germans over here. And I was like, because um, I thought, oh, goody. I've got like a, you know, I can start. But then I cut myself off with these rules of, well, I had a penalty due to the fact that I was no longer four movement points away from my headquarters. So I, it was going to start causing me some grief, essentially. Oh, that's it. I'm, uh, it's, yeah, I'm going to go off and do a little bit. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other, oh yes, oh, let's go through the turn sequence very quickly. Like I said, uh, so it'll be movement, including, uh, you know, bringing the re reserves. But if the headquarters moves, cannot supply. Then there's the combats, and here's the uh, uh, just a little extra wrinkle because I I'm enjoying this bit. Is and then there's the a secondary movement phase, and if there's any remaining reserve units in the headquarters, if they want, they can uh, reinforce, like plug up uh, some areas, back up to a, a maximum of twelve, or make a new unit and and plug up a whole. I'm giving them, um, giving the player that uh, strategic option. Do you want to use some of your reserves uh, in a second movement phase after combats to uh, do? That's your decision point. I'm, I'm enjoying this. Like I said, it's been fun. And I'm going to continue uh, hammering away at this. I'm having a lot more fun uh, playing this game than I've had um, playing some other ones. I can tell you that much. Uh, like, uh, you know, properly published. I know it looks like a bag of whatevers, but... Uh, yeah, but like I said, I've been having some fun and isn't that uh, kind of like the whole point? All right, see ya.